Thank you for the introduction. It's an honor to be with you today and to present the Vive pipeline. First, my disclosures. I'm a full-time employee of Vive Healthcare. I'd like to start this presentation by acknowledging that our ultimate ambition, which we share with many of you in this forum, is to eventually achieve remission and cure for HIV. We contribute to this piece of work through significant external collaborations. For example, that outlined on this slide under the umbrella of Cura, which is a partnership with the University of North Carolina and the National Institute of Health. Until we achieve this ultimate ambition, though, there remains significant unmet need for people living with HIV. Our portfolio and pipeline at Vive Healthcare seeks to address these needs that continue to evolve. People are living longer with HIV, which is fantastic, and this brings with it a lifetime of exposure to antiretroviral therapy. Our portfolio and pipeline provides option that to take less drugs and take drugs less frequently. We're also exploring new modalities of actions and drug delivery that could see long-acting therapy being delivered either in the clinic or at home. When you look at special populations, we continue to innovate to bring better options for highly treatment-experienced individuals. We continue to look at formulations and fix those combinations to bring the best options to the youngest children. And we are investing significantly in revolutionizing the prevention space. Looking at people living with HIV themselves, we should not underestimate the psychological impact of daily treatment of HIV. And our long acting therapies in the pipeline could go a long way to addressing this concern. Finally, we do not believe in one size fits all and our products offer options for individualizing HIV care. You will agree with me that we are now at an era of HIV therapy where highly active antiretroviral therapy can be achieved with both three drug regimens and two drug regimens. Our next major innovation in the two drug regimen space is long acting cabotegravir and rilpivirin. The development program for this regimen is outlined here. ATLAS, FLAIR and ATLAS 2M are the pivotal studies. ATLAS and FLAIR explored cabotegravir and rilpivirin LA for weekly dosing, while ATLAS 2M extended this to eight weekly dosing. The SOLAR study is a phase 3B study starting soon and will compare eight weekly CAB plus Rilpivirin LA dosing to oral daily Victavi. On the far right of this slide, you will see our focus on implementation sciences with studies both in the US and Europe, the customized and the carousel studies respectively. Across the pivotal studies, we see CAB and Rilpivirin demonstrating non-inferiority against the comparator arms. In ATLAS and FLAIR, this is oral standard of care. And in the ATLAS 2M, four weekly dosing is the comparator to eight weekly dosing. As you can see from all the bar charts, rates of virologic non-response are low and consistent across the clinical development program. Suppression rates are high and similar to those seen in the most contemporaneous studies in oral therapy, in the region of 94% at the primary endpoint. We have now seen durability data in the FLARE study at two years and in the phase two, LATTE2 study up to weeks 160. Importantly, across the program, we saw injection site reactions being common, but overwhelmingly of low grade, grade one and two of severity, and the reporting of these diminishes over time. In fact, only 2% of discontinuations were reported because of ISRs. One critical observation in this development program is the overwhelming preference for long acting dosing over previous oral therapy in ATLAS and FLARE. In ATLAS 2M, we also saw overwhelming preference for eight weekly dosing over four weekly dosing. Moving on to the pediatric space, we have an extensive pediatric PAN portfolio development program we're very proud of. This has recently seen the approval of Dolotegra pediatric dispersible formulations by the FDA. A similar submission is ongoing with European agency and other regulators globally. Allow me now to segue briefly to talk about long acting cabotegravir for prevention. Outlined here is a development program for CAB LA in PrEP. The pivotal studies are the HPTN, 083 and 084 studies 
and these will soon be complemented by studies in adolescents. HPTN 083 is a double-blinded placebo-controlled study investigating efficacy of CAB-LA dose every eight weeks versus oral TDF-FTC for PrEP in HIV uninfected MSM and transgender women. Here you see the study design, an initial safety step with CAB oral lead-in, followed by the comparative phase of the study looking at CAB-LA versus TDF-FTC, and finally, at the end of the study, a phase where TDF-FTC is provided to cover the CAB PK tail for a year. In May 2020, the DSMB recommended that the blinded part of the study be stopped early for successfully meeting its pre-specified objectives. All participants will now be unblinded and offered CAB-LA. Here are the primary endpoint results. The HIV incidence in the TDF FTC arm was 1.22 compared to 0.41 in the CAB LA arm. This translates to a hazard ratio of 0.34. As you can see to the right of the slide, the confidence intervals falls well outside both the non inferiority and superiority margins, demonstrating superiority of CAB LA versus TDF FTC in preventing HIV infections in MSM and transgender women at risk. Next, let's look at drugs in the pipeline with new modalities of action. The first of these is for Fostemsevere. Fostemsevere is an attachment inhibitor, binds to the envelope of GP120, inducing a conformational change which prevents binding of CD4 to GP120, thereby preventing internalization of the virus. The BRIGHT study comprises two arms, a randomized cohort and a non-randomized cohort. And the randomized cohort, Highly treatment experienced patients who are virologically failing were randomized to receive for stem sever or placebo for eight days on top of the existing regimen. From day nine onwards, the background therapy was optimized. The non randomized arm recruited individuals with no remaining options, almost in a compassionate use fashion, and also allowed the concomitant use of ibaluzumab in some of these individuals. In the randomized cohort, we saw viral suppression rates increasing steadily from weeks 24 through to weeks 96, with a snapshot efficacy of 60% at week 96. In the observed analysis, where changes to the optimized background therapy were not considered failure, this efficacy rate rises to 79%. Substantial CD4 recovery was also observed in this study. Similarly, in the non-randomized arm, we see sustained virologic suppression rates around 37%, also translating to an efficacy rate of 59% at week 96 on the observed analysis. As we look to the future of our pipeline then, there are options for fewer drugs and less frequent dosing, chemical and biologic entities, paradigms for treatment administration in clinics or at home, and possibilities for mixing both modalities and frequency of administration. The next most advanced entity in our pipeline is the maturation inhibitor class. These represent a new mode of action, blocking protease cleavage of GAG, resulting in immature viral particles. There are two molecules in this class, the lead being the oral MI254. Here you see the phase 2B study design for MI254. Three different doses of MI254 will be combined with two nukes, and each compared against a reference arm of dolotegravir plus two nukes. At week 48, which is the primary endpoint, the optimal dose of MI254 will then be taken forward as a two-drug regimen with dolotegravir. So to conclude, I believe that we have a portfolio and pipeline that addresses many of the ongoing key unmet needs of people living with HIV and brings options to both prescribers and people living with HIV, extending treatment beyond oral, beyond daily dosing, and that will really allow us to individualize care, and a potential step change in how PrEP is delivered, which could contribute to making a significant impact on the global epidemic. Thank you.